friends, my name is Miss Kelly and I work for the Carroll County Public Library's Outreach Department. I'm so happy to welcome you back to my home for another Storytime Adventure. And my friend is here with us today too. That's right friends, I'm here. Hi Miss Kelly. Hi Corky. That's right, I'm Corky the Penguin. Before we do Storytime, I'd like to sing my hello song, okay? Well, sure Corky, that would be great. Hi friends, it's time to get together. Hi friends, come and sing a song with me. Hi friends, it's time to share some laughter. Hi friends, come and smile a while with me. Oh, great job, Corky. I hope you guys are starting to learn that song and sing along with him. So you know, Corky, I thought maybe today we'd do a special story time because it's my favorite month of the whole year. It's May, that's right. Why do you love May so much, Miss Kelly? Because May is such a colorful month. I love to see all the colors of the green of the trees, the colors of the flowers in my garden, and oh, look, I love to see the colors of the butterflies that come and visit. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's a monarch. Oh boy, it's beautiful. Oh look, it landed on a flower. Hi, butterfly. <laughs> Gee, are we going to talk about butterflies today? Yes, we are, Corky. <gasps> there she goes. She's flying away. Goodbye, butterfly. Oh boy, wasn't she beautiful? Yes, she's so graceful and she flutters all around from flower to flower. Well, I thought we could be science explorers today and we could explore all about butterflies and moths. That sounds so cool. Do you like butterflies? Do you like moths? Me too. Well, Corky, let's turn over this way. Friends, you can come along with us. We're going to look at some fun things that I've gathered together here. Oh boy, this looks interesting. Hmm. And Corky, I wanted to start out by sharing a little book, one of my favorite books about butterflies with our friend. Okay, I think while you do that, friends, is it all right with you? I think I'm going to go back out in the garden, see if I can find any more butterflies. I'll be back later. Bye. Woohoo! Oh, there goes Corky off into the garden. So, I wanted to share this book with you first. This is one of, a part of one of my favorite nonfiction series. The title is, A Butterfly is Patient. The author is Diana Hutz Aston. That means she wrote the words in our story. And the illustrator, Sylvia Long, painted these gorgeous illustrations. I just love the artwork in this series of books. It goes from the front cover, across the spine, all the way to the back cover. Can you see that, friends? You can see all the beautiful artwork. So I'm going to open up to the end pages and show you one of the reasons why I love this series so much is that in the beginning end pages, they always show us lots of different things. In this case, lots of different caterpillars. Did you know that caterpillars could be so many different colors and shapes and sizes? Some are smooth, some are fuzzy. Oh my goodness, it's amazing. Well, keep, remember that for when we get to the end. I'm just going to show you a few pages inside this book. This next page talks all about the life cycle of a butterfly. And I am going to share a little bit more detail with you about that. But you can see how it goes from something very tiny all the way to a glorious butterfly. A butterfly is spectacular. Do you know what that amazing word means? Spectacular means, wow, it's amazing. It makes you say, oh my goodness, holy mackerel. Look at that, so colorful. So many different shapes and sizes and patterns on the butterflies. Now, a butterfly is not a moth because there are differences between the two kinds of creatures. And I'll just tell you a, a few rules to help you tell the difference. Most butterflies are day flyers. They fly around in the sunlight 
going from flower to flower, drinking the nectar from the plants, and then flying to the next flower and spreading that pollen around. That's why we call them pollinators. And most butterflies, as they fly around, when they land on a flower, they fold their wings upright like this, and then they fly some more. So if you see an insect with its wings up like this, you know it's probably a butterfly. They also have little tiny knobs, like bumps, at the end of their antenna, which is another clue. Now, on the other hand, moths are kind of the opposite. They are almost all nocturnal. They go out at night and they visit flowers that bloom at night. And their antenna are very fancy. They look like feathers. Sometimes some moths can just have very plain antenna, but most of them have antenna that look like feathers. And when they come to rest, they fly around, and when they come to rest, they put their wings out flat, and then they fly and fly and fly and land flat. There are a few exceptions to these rules, but that's how you can tell the difference between a butterfly and a moth. And so we want to remember a butterfly is patient. It goes from a tiny little caterpillar, bigger and bigger, to its chrysalis until it's ready to soar. Look at those gorgeous blue butterflies. Now you remember I told you to think about the first set of end pages. When we get to the back, they've changed into glorious butterflies. And you can see all the different varieties there. These are just a few. I learned when I was getting ready for this story time that altogether there are over 170,000 known species of butterflies and moths in the world. Isn't that amazing to think about? And there are other kinds that haven't been discovered yet. Now, hmm, what should we do next? I think it would be fun. Oh, I wanted, I promised I was going to show you about the life cycle. So I have this little model here that you may be able to see. If we'll start with the eggs, that's a good place to start. The mother butterfly lays her eggs on a leaf, and they're stuck to that leaf, and then the little caterpillars hatch out, and they munch, 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 munch on the leaves until they get bigger and bigger and bigger, <gasps> like this guy right here. Can you see him? And he keeps eating and eating and eating until he's ready to form a chrysalis. Now, if this was the caterpillar of a moth, we would call what it makes a cocoon. So that's another difference. So this chrysalis is a little shell that holds that caterpillar while his body is changing. And when he's ready, he can come out of that chrysalis. He emerges out as an adult butterfly. Isn't that amazing? You can learn lots more about that in books like this one. That book's available on Hoopla. If you go to the Carroll County Public Library website and visit, go to Hoopla, you can borrow that book. And you can also find that book on our website under Tumble Books, which are animated versions of storybooks uh, that have a narrator reading the book out loud to you. So I hope you'll explore some more of that. Now let's have a little fun with a rhyme that I wrote all about five little butterflies. You see what's on my fingers? Look! One, two, three, four, five. Oh, thank you for counting them with me. Five colorful butterflies flying around this big pink flower. I wrote a little finger play rhyme and you can do it along with me if you wiggle your fingers like this. Ready? Five little butterflies like to fly and soar. One flew away and then there were how many? Four, good job. Four little butterflies, as graceful as can be. One fluttered far away, and then there were three. Good job. One, two, three. Three little butterflies with wings so bright and new. One landed on a flower, and then there were two. Two little butterflies shining in the sun. 
one stopped to puddle, <gasps> then there was one. One little butterfly searching for some fun. She flew off to find the others, and then there were none. No more butterflies. Do you remember the counting word? Zero. That's right, friends. Well, let's see if we can get our butterflies to come back and answer a question for me. One, two, three, four, five. There you are. So, butterflies, what did you mean when you said that one stopped to puddle? Well, when butterflies are thirsty, we find a mud puddle, a water puddle down in the ground from the rain, and we drink from the water in the puddle. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Did you know that, friends? Would you like to have your next drink from a puddle? Mm, I don't think so. Not me. But I'm glad it works for you. Goodbye, butterflies. They're going to go and take a little rest. So thanks for joining in. Maybe you'd like to try making a glove puppet like that too, friends. I put some information about how to do that on the library's outreach Pinterest board under butterflies and moths, and I'll share some more information with you about that at the end. So let's see, I think it's time to be science explorers together. Are you ready to do that? Okay, let's see if Corky wants to come back. Hey, Corky! Oh, I'm coming, I'm coming, Miss Kelly. I want to help, I want to help, I want to help! Oh boy, I want to go outside! Well, you know, Corky, I was telling our friends it's fun to be science explorers to discover everything we can about things out in nature. Oh yeah, I love doing that with you. I like doing it with you too. And you know, as far as exploring butterflies and moths, right now it's mid-May and in my yard here in the woods where I live, there aren't that many butterflies and moths out yet. There, because there aren't as many of the flowers that they like to drink from that are open in my yard in my gardens right now. Oh, that's too bad. Does that mean we can't see them? Well, no, Corky, because luckily, last summer, when my gardens were in full bloom, I went exploring and I did some observations. I took photographs and videos, and I'm going to share them with the friends in just a minute. Oh, that'll be good. And I'll show you how, where and how I found them. But before I do that, I wanted to tell our friends about making a moth observation box. Oh, that sounds like a great project. I think I'll get all my gear together. Do you have my tools? Oh, I do, Corky. They're right here. We have your butterfly net and your magnifying glass and your bug observation box. So I think we're ready to go. And friends, if you don't have all those things, you might be able to collect other things in your home that you could use. But those are the things Quirky's going to take. You want to go ahead out and I'll meet you out in a minute? Sure. I'll see you guys out there. Bye. I'm going to let Quirky go over. and He'll get ready to go outside. And I'll show you another way that you could be a, bug ex a moth explorer. So... I like to just turn the lights on outside in my yard. I have lights on my shed, which I'll show you in a minute. I have lights by my front door. And if I leave them on overnight, sometimes the moths will come and get on the wall. And then when I wake up in the morning, I can go out and see them. I, but if you don't have that kind of light in your home, then you can make a moth observation box like this one. It's simply a box with something attached to the front that you can see light through. This is wax paper. You could use plastic wrap. You could use other materials. And you, all you need is a little battery-operated light, like this little flashlight. And I'm going to put that inside the box and cover over the box. And now I can set this out in my yard overnight and I can come out and observe and see if any moths were attracted to that light. That idea came from this cool book. This is another book that's also available from Hoopla. The title is An Extraordinary Ordinary Moth. This little plain moth feels sad that he's not so beautiful as all the fancy butterflies that are in the yard. 
and he thinks no one will want to know him or be interested in him because he's just ordinary. But he finds a friend, and that friend says, I think this little ordinary moth is my very favorite insect. That makes the moth feel happy inside. So this is a fiction book. It's a, it's a pretend story that what the author made up in her imagination. Her name is Carlin Gray. But in the back of the book, she added some cool facts about moths and gave directions for making your very own moth observation box. So that's where I got the idea for making that box with the light inside. If you're interested in trying that yourselves, the end of the story time, I'll share with you some more information about our library YouTube channel. You should subscribe because a lot of our story time videos are there and we have some extra content too. So I've made a little DIY or do it yourself video to teach you how to make a moth observation box. And I think that will be a fun activity to try. So are you ready friends? Let's get all of our gear and head outside and I'm going to show you some of the moths and butterflies that I have found. Well friends, we're going to pretend we're stepping outside into my yard so that I can share some of the different butterfly and moth observations that I have made in the past. It's really early May right now while we're doing this story time together. And there aren't that many butterflies and moths out in my yard yet. And that's partly because a lot of the flowers that they like to visit haven't really quite all come out yet. Um, I'm starting to see a few of them here and there. But I want to share some pictures and videos from last summer when I saw many, many, many butterflies and moths and luckily I captured images that I can share with you. The first few come from a trip that I made to Ledoux Topiary Gardens which is one of my very favorite places to see plants and also to see butterflies. While I was there, there was, I saw this monarch butterfly who landed on a white zinnia flower and monarchs are probably one of the butterflies that most of us have seen or at least seen pictures of. Um, they're amazing orange and black butterflies, so beautiful. They're great travelers, and that's another whole story time um, that we could explore sometime together, the story of how far they travel every year. The next butterfly is called an Eastern Tiger Swallowtail. And this one is captured a little bit of a video where it's landed on some blue phlox in my grandson's yard. And you can see how pretty the yellow and black markings are on its wings as it flutters about. Then back to Ledoux Gardens to see this spice bush swallowtail butterfly. He's landed on some orange zinnias, and you can see his beautiful black wings, soft as velvet, and down near the bottom of each wing, he has that area of blue. When the sun hits that blue, it's so bright and beautiful. Then you can see here, when I stood back a little ways from that zinnia garden, I took this little video to show there were just dozens and dozens and dozens of butterflies fluttering all over those flowers. They were so happy to enjoy all the delicious nectar that that garden had to offer. So let's switch now to some images I have that I took in my backyard um, over a course of a few days last summer in the month of July. You know, I have a shed in my backyard that I'll show you in a minute, and we keep the lights on the shed on all night long. And you remember, we talked about how much those moths love lights. So here are some examples of the ones that I found and was able to identify. The first one is an arched hook tip, and he's kind of tan with brown and black markings. Then there's a curved, lined, 
looper moth, uh, who is yellow with some white and brown markings. Next is a deep yellow euclena, which is kind of a pretty gold and brown color with wing tips that are sort of pointy instead of curved like some of the others. Next is a very small moth called a Hebrew moth, which has very bright black and white squiggly um, designs on his wings. Then one of my favorite moths is the hummingbird clear wing moth. These moths act very much like hummingbirds. If you've ever seen or heard a hummingbird in a garden, how it flies so fast and hovers next to a flower and its wings move so fast it makes a hmm humming sound. With this clear wing moth, you can see right through its wings. Isn't that amazing? Then there's a silver spotted skipper, which is a brown moth with white and tan markings. And this one is a rule breaker because when he's resting on the flower, his wings are upright. Remember we talked about how most wings on the moths are flat while they're resting? But this one is an exception to the rule. Then there's a widow underwing moth, which is gray and black. A yellow slant line moth with very intricate gray, brown, and black markings. I think that one's really pretty. Then I was very excited over the course of a few days last summer to see several of these large imperial moths. They are really beautiful. They can be between three and seven inches wide, which is really big. The ones I saw were three to four inches. And you can see they're sort of a yellowish color and then the brown markings are almost purplish. Really, really pretty. And then my most exciting find of all. So first I wanna show you this picture of my red shed. And you can see um, the light there on the side of the shed. During the daytime, the light is not on, but you can see that black light. And then as we step a little closer, like I did on this special day, and you walk up towards the front of the shed where the door is, you can see I have a wreath that's made of dogwood flowers on the door. And as I stepped up closer and reached for the handle to open the door, <gasps> I took a double take. Oh my goodness, camouflaged on the wreath is this beautiful Luna moth. They are really rare to see in all the years I've been living here, which is over 30 years. I've only seen a Luna moth a few times. And this one was more than four inches wide. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. But before I show you the close-up of that adult moth, I want to step back even further in time and tell you a little story. Once upon a time, for real, I was babysitting some Luna moth cocoons for my friend, Miss Erin. Some of you know Miss Erin. And her children had these, raised these Luna moth caterpillars to, and they had made cocoons, but then they were going away on a trip and they were going to miss they weren't going to be able to take care of them and they were going to miss them emerging from their cocoon. So they asked me to babysit. So they brought them to my house in an aquarium with some leaves and sticks inside. And sure enough, one evening, the cocoons hatched open and the plump little baby Luna Moth emerged from the cocoon and at first they had very plump fuzzy soft green bodies and teeny tiny wings and I thought this is so strange that doesn't look like a luna moth the way I know it but we watched and we waited and slowly 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 the wings pumped up and got bigger and bigger until ta-da here's a close-up of what an adult luna moth looks like so you can see how gorgeous their pale green wings are. They have little spots that look like eyes and those spots confuse other animals that might want to eat the moth 
would maybe think it's a bigger animal and be afraid to eat it. So that's one of the ways they protect themselves. And you see at the tips of their wings how they have almost like long tails. When they fly, they're very graceful and quiet in their flight. And so once Miss Erin's Luna Maws hatched and we finished watching them and taking some pictures, then we let those go. But this one stayed on the wreath on my shed door for several days. It was very thrilling, very exciting to see. So that's a tour of some of my observations of butterflies and moths. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Let's go back inside and finish up our story time. Well, friends, we're back inside my home. Wasn't that fun, Corky? It sure was, but you know, I feel like I need a little energy break. Okay, buddy, I think I'll share a poem I wrote with our friends. Why don't you go over and you can do it with us? Okay, I'll watch from over there. I'll see you later. Woohoo! There he goes. Thanks, Corky. Okay, so friends, everybody stand up. You and your grown-ups all stand up. And we're going to get some wiggles out, and we're going to do a po an action rhyme to a poem I wrote called I Am a Butterfly. We're going to start out like a butterfly starts out as a tiny egg. So can you kneel down, and can you tuck your chin, and hug your legs, and make a little ball, and you can be an egg. I am an egg. Small and round, my mother stuck me to a leaf so I wouldn't be found. Now raise your head. I am a caterpillar, wiggly and slow. Put your hands down by your sides and stand up, wiggle up. I ate and ate and ate and ate so I could grow. I have a chrysalis. Can you wrap your arms around tight? Safe and strong. I wait safe and snug inside. It doesn't take long. I am all grown up. Colorful and shy. Can you pull out your wings? Let's emerge from our chrysalis. I crawled out of my chrysalis, and now I'm a butterfly! Yay! Let me see your beautiful, colorful wings. <gasps> You're spectacular! Good job, Corky! I can see you waving your flippers like butterfly wings. That's great, friends. Have a seat. Well, you know, one of the things that all of your grown-ups know is that children and really grown-ups too we learn better we learn new things better when we use all of our senses when we use our eyes to see our ears to hear our hands to touch our nose to smell and our mouth to taste that's right we have five senses and I wanted to show you quickly a fun little activity that you could try at home. It's called making a sensory bin. I put lots of instructions about how to do this on YouTube in a second DIY video. So you and your grown-ups could look at that and get some more ideas. But it's simply just any kind of a container. It's nice if it has a top. And inside you can put fun things. In this case, I made a butterfly garden with Easter grass and little butterfly cutouts and flowers. And I can touch, I can hear the rustling. I can see the colors and I can feel the textures. And I can pretend that I'm a butterfly tasting the nectar from the flowers, but I can't really taste them, can I? That wouldn't taste very good. It might be fun to have some things like, this is from my kitchen, a little sieve that I use when I'm cooking, but you could pretend that you were catching butterflies in your little butterfly net. 
I even added little pieces of pipe cleaner to be caterpillars. And so you can search between the different uh, pieces of grass to see what you can find. The only thing that's missing really is your sense of smell. And if you maybe your grown up has a little perfume or something that has the smell of flowers that they could give a little bit of a spritz to it, as long as you're not gonna put it in your mouth, then you could smell the smell of flowers and pretend it was a real butterfly garden. So I'm gonna tuck that away. You might wanna think about making your very own sensory bin at your house. Well, it really has been fun sharing all these ideas with you. We got to sing together, look at books, go outside to be nature explorers, listen to poems and do movements. We had a great time. So thanks for stopping by, friends. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we got together. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to sing a song with you. Goodbye, friends. I'm glad we shared some laughter. Goodbye, friends. It was fun to smile a while with you. So until we see you next time, goodbye. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that butterfly and moth story time fun. It was really great to be together with you. And I just wanted to share some extra resources like I do each time to make sure you're aware of some of the great things that you can borrow from the library, even though we can't all be together. These are things that you could borrow to use on your phone or your tablet or your computer. So the first few are from Hoopla, which we've talked about before. And one of the books that I showed you during the story time is from a favorite series of mine. The title is A Butterfly is Patient. And the author is Diana Hutz Aston. So this is another wonderful nonfiction title that she's created. Um, it's from she's the same author that wrote "An Egg Is Quiet," and you can see an incredible variety of caterpillars on the first set of end pages at the front of the book, all the way through to the glorious butterflies in the back of the book. Every page in between is filled with beautiful art and interesting facts. And if you'd like to see this book come to life in a whole new way, you might want to find it on Tumble Books, which is on another part of our website. Um, you can see an animated version of the books while a narrator reads the text to you. So this is something a child could do all by themselves or with a grown-up or other friends. The next book is simply entitled moths and the author is Sophie Lockwood. This book is part of a series called World of Insects so if you really like bugs and all kinds of creepy critters you might want to check out this series. Um, in this case the book features my favorite moth on the cover, the Luna, and you can learn everything you ever wanted to know about these interesting and beautiful nocturnal creatures. You'll just love the brilliant photographs and the engaging text. Next, we have a fiction story, an easy picture book entitled An Extraordinary Ordinary Moth. I showed this one to you too during story time because it has the great activity in the back about making the moth observation box. It's a story about a simple gray moth who's feeling sad that he isn't nearly as fancy or interesting as the other moths or butterflies. But happily, he meets a friend who declares that the little moth is his favorite insect of all. And there are lots of great facts in the back of the book, along with those directions for making the box, like the one we saw in story time. Next, Pete the Cat and the Cool Caterpillar by James Dean. Our favorite cool cat is back in this fun read-along ebook. Pete makes friends with a super cool caterpillar, only to be upset when his new friend disappears. Poof! Can you imagine the wild surprise that Pete discovers at the end of our story? Well, you'll have to read the book and find out. Super Simple Butterfly Gardens, A Kid's Guide to Gardening by Alex Kozowski is a book that shows you some really simple ideas to make gardens that will attract butterflies and moths to your yard. 
you did you know there are certain plants that will attract these amazing pollinators well you can create a garden in a big flower bed or a tiny container or anything in between they give you lots of great ideas in this book next we'll switch over to canopy kids um, which you can also find on our website there's a film that's part of the series nature cat which you can also watch on pbs on television this one is called where have all the butterflies gone and in this story daisy has invited her butterfly friends to her house for a play date but wait there are no flowers for them to visit that's when nature cat saves the day by helping daisy create a special butterfly garden and then i wanted to share a couple online resources with you um, the first is the website i naturalist.org i n a t u r a l i s t dot o r g i have a membership it's free to create an account on this website and then if you take pictures of anything living it could be a plant or an animal you can submit your observations to this site and then real scientists from all over the world will help you to identify what you found and if they can verify what it is and they're absolutely sure then they can use it in some of their scientific study projects that they're doing to learn more and more about nature so that's really kind of fun and exciting and i wanted to remind you that the library has a YouTube channel library CCPL kids and families and all of our story time videos are being uh, housed there so you can always go there to watch them again and again if you like and if you subscribe to the channel then you'll get reminders when new content comes online I'm putting a few DIY videos there, short little videos that tell you how to create your very own butterfly sensory bin that you and your friends can play in, and how to construct a moth observation box like the one we saw in today's story time. Last but not least, don't forget our Pinterest page. Remember, outreach is on Pinterest, and here's the link. We've pinned tons of great ideas here to keep the learning and fun going on and on for you and the whole family. There are art projects, wonderful books to explore, recipes, and even a video of a real butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. So have fun exploring there. If you decide to make any of the uh, things that you see there, we would love it if you would share a picture of what you made or a little story about what you did. We would love to hear from you. So happy nature exploring. See you next time.